Hello and welcome to the interview here on France 24. Well, it's been called by some critics the one of the strictest nations on earth, a puritanical kingdom where women are banned from driving, and vast oil wealth, along with lots of police, are used to stifle dissent. Now, the Arab Spring has also left Saudi Arabia's ruling royal family facing another dilemma, and that is how far to go in supporting the changes that are sweeping across the region. And another big question, what about Saudi Arabia's arch rival Shiite Iran? How might the turmoil in the Arab world right now play into the hands of Iran? What does that mean for Saudi Arabia? Now, my guest today is Jamal Khashoggi. Welcome to the show. He is a former editor of uh, one of the most reformist newspapers in Saudi Arabia, Al-Watan. He resigned uh, two years ago from his position there, and that was after uh, a publication, an opinion piece, was published in your newspaper, not by you, by someone else, a poet, criticizing Salafism, which is really a strict reading of Sunni Islam, which is prevalent in Saudi Arabia. You yourself didn't support the piece, but you resigned, and you had had differences of opinion with the authorities in uh, Saudi Arabia in the past. Now, today I want to speak to you. You are uh, the head of a new channel there about to launch at the end of the year, the, uh, the Arab News Channel. Uh, I'd like to speak to you more about Saudi Arabia inside and outside the reg region and you as a journalist, how you see uh, Saudi Arabia's role. The Friends of Syria meeting here today in Paris. Large sort of opposition meeting to send a message to Assad. What is Saudi Arabia's role? I think there's been some misunderstandings here. We've heard Saudi Arabia wants to give cash and arm the opposition. What is Saudi Arabia doing right now? What should it be doing? Uh, two things. Saudi Arabia is very much interested in what goes on in Syria for political and for uh, moral responsibility. The Syrians are very close to us. It is, they're almost uh, Almost neighbors, practically. Neighbors, yani, and, and neighbors, family. Uh, Arabs are very close to each other everywhere, but the Syrians are closer. Uh, so there is a moral responsibility. We are not happy with what, what is going on in Syria. But in the same time, uh, politically, history is being restructuring right now uh, in, in the Middle East. Mm. It is as important as the moment of 1918 when the new Middle East was born. Syria was hijacked for 40 years out of its ge geographical political situation by Iran and by a sectarian government. Now we are cor history is being corrected between us and Turkey. If Syria is back between us and Turkey, we will have a functioning new Middle East with Syria at its heart. Mm -hmm. So it is very much important for us to ease this transition for the Syrian people and to have it as quick without destroying the state of Syria. That's it's what a, we are afraid of. It's a very tricky balancing act. Your, your king, King Abdullah, had originally been a real ally of Bashar Assad, but he's been very silent uh, towards him in recent months. Many would say resentful towards him. I, I'd like to, can you tell me what is Saudi Arabia actually doing? We've heard about arms supplies to the opposition. That hasn't happened yet, has it? Look, there is a different history in the Arab world. Before. 2011 and, and, and after. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia policies have changed dramatically before and after. Okay. Syria was an ally, but that was under the... Uh, the the pre previous order. The previous order, the, the previous mm. Arab order. The new Arab order does not entertain or tolerate someone like Bashar al-Assad. Uh, so what is Saudi Arabia is going to do? We are all now in the middle of the process. The process is to get the, the Security Council and the uh, Russian to agree in some format that would allow the international uh, world to intervene somehow to end the crisis in Syria. Unfortunately, just like in Kosovo, just like in, Bos in Bosnia, the process could take months. Would it you like to see Saudi Arabia, though, doing something concretely? apart from the other countries, say also Qatar. We've heard a lot about Qatar. Arming the rebels, actually sending them arms. Personally, I don't like the idea of arming the rebels, mm. but I would like to see uh, NATO airplanes or Turkish airplanes or Saudi airplanes giving Bashar al-Assad a taste of what he being given to his people. Mm. If Bashar al-Assad spent three nights under 
in a bunker under his palace somewhere, he will realize what he has been doing to his people. We need to send that message to Bashar al-Assad. But I would much, I would personally, I would much rather the, the Syrian to continue in their peaceful revolution. In the peaceful revolution, you mentioned Iran earlier. Iran obviously is emerging, it would seem, as quite a rival to Saudi Arabia for influence in the region. And I'm, I'm curious, is that a stereotype in the West? Is there really that rivalry right now? And how, how much of a threat do you, uh, as a Saudi Arabian, how much of a threat do you see Iran? In Unfortunately, the there's a rivalry. But that rivalry is not, uh, it doesn't have to be there all the time. It's not, it's not an arch rivalry. Uh, when we Which had, I called it. I called yes, it an arch rivalry. Yes. <laughs> when we had an opportunity to have a better relationship with Iran, with mm. the Islamic Republic of Iran, a, a, a decade ago, we jumped into it. When Rafsanjani was in power, he came to Saudi Arabia. Uh, the king, he was a crown prince at that time. Uh, built a very working relationship with him. We want to have a better uh, relation with the Iranians. I will give you the example of Turkey. Turkey is a powerful country emerging right now in the Middle East, but we appreciate the Turkish infringement, if I will call it so, because it is positive. It is coming with business. It's coming with, 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 with cooperation. We would like the Iranians to also come to our uh, area with business, with ideas, with engagement not with intervention, not with uh, building relations within the societies in a sectarian manner. Mm. They go to the Shia community and they build a relation with them. They go to other Shia community in Yemen. They go to the Shia community in Bahrain. That is not healthy. Let's have a relation between a state to a state, people to people. Not sectarian. I understand what you're saying. But let's look within Saudi Arabia itself right now because there was some criticism, especially from the United States uh, last year, when Saudi Arabia sent about a thousand troops to Bahrain uh, to support yes, that's, that's to support true. the monarchy there against the protests by a uh, Sunni Muslim. What? What? How do you defend Saudi Arabia on that? Because I mean, that, you could say that that was the Arab Spring happening, and Saudi Arabia intervened to make sure it didn't happen. There's a big difference between what goes in Bahrain and elsewhere in the Arab world, where Libya or Syria, for example. There is a genuine movement of a position, but uh, people in Bahrain demanding certain rights. And the Bahraini government is willing to engage with them. And uh, we see that happening every day. But when the, when the Saudi troops went to Bahrain, it did not fire a single shot. No, but they did help the but, military to, su to, but to support. It, it was to, to a symbolic stand in order to send a message to the Iranians. That that, look, that peaceful protest against that, the regime will not be tolerated? No, that don't mingle in, in Bahrain. Leave, uh, leave the people of Bahrain, finish their own problems. The, 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 the government of Bahrain and the, 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 the Shia protesters. But the Iranians, they needed that message because the Iranian appetite began to grow at that day. Look. Bahrain is so, Manhattan to Saudi Arabia. There is no way uh, Saudi Arabia is going to surrender Bahrain uh, to, 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 uh, to see Bahrain as part of, of, of an Iranian domination. No way we're going to tolerate that. It is as serious to us as when the, the, the Soviets send their uh, missiles to Cuba. Mm. And it's right is, on your doorstep. It's it is right your neighbor. On our doorstep. It's, it's your neighbor. In Saudi Arabia itself, when you think of Saudi Arabia outside the country, Westerners, you think of all of that oil. I think Saudi Arabia had t over $200 billion in oil revenue last year. Some people say Saudi Arabia has used that oil revenue to suppress dissent at home. The king has given a lot of jobs, a lot of job programs, keep the people happy with money. They won't protest. What do you say to that? Maybe that is trickle down economy. It's not to, do to suppress dissent. It is economy in moving. I would like to see more of that. I would like to see more ideas. I don't like to see money being spent. I would like to see ideas that will create money in the country. I don't want a revolution in Saudi Arabia, but I want the people and I want uh, my sons, my daughter to, to enjoy a better life in Saudi Arabia. And I think we can do that. We can all benefit from that amount of money you just mentioned. Do you see the society, we, we speak about these gradual reforms right now, women being granted the right to vote. You yourself have had differences of opinions with the authorities. Do you see the society moving in the right direction towards reform? Do you tend to still be very critical? Yes, we are. I, I, will, I will continue to be critical. We are all becoming more critical in Saudi Arabia. You will not believe the dialogue 
uh, the discourse we are having in mm. Saudi Arabia nowadays. It's one of the most open country. We are one of the most open countries in, in the Arab world. It is becoming we Saudi Arabia is the largest country in the Arab world in, in peer capita in their in, in their adaptation to to, to, to new media. Uh, Twitter users, Facebook users are jumping by uh, tin falls every day. But it's still a country where you have segregation of the sexes. You've been very outspoken on women's rights, segregation of the second sexes, women still banned from driving. A lot of people would say that's not too open. That's not very open, and that's gonna, it's not going to continue. That's going to change. We are pressuring, but we are for evolution. We are for evolution, and evolution is, 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 is happening every day. It's, it will not be long before we see a silly, nauseous no matter like, like women's driving behind our back. It's going to happen. Maybe next year, maybe in two years, it's going to happen. We have our national front. And our national front, our conservatives, are quite powerful. Uh, we, I don't want to confront them. I would like to embrace them. And, and I feel the government is trying to do that. I would like to open a dialogue with them in order for, for all of us to, 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 to move for a new future Saudi Arabia. Shamal Khashoggi, we could talk about it all day. Unfortunately, we do have to leave it there. We've run out of time. I appreciate you uh, speaking to us today about a country which perhaps is very misunderstood by a it lot of people outside uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Jamal Khashoggi, former editor of Al-Watan, progressive newspaper in Saudi Arabia, now the head of a new about-to-launch channel, the All Arab News Channel. Thank you very much for being my guest today. Thank you, my friend. Thanks to all of you for watching the interview here. You <laughs>